I'm Bernard Maschke, come from the U University of Lyon. Is, I will present some common work with Arjen van der Staft from the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. So, um, my talk uh, could be considered as a follow-up of the talk of Hiroaki and, uh, and Francois, um, who dealt with open thermodynamic systems. And maybe I go one step further and I con uh, consider control. But I notice that there are not many people from the control community uh, sitting around. So I will keep this part short. Actually, I would also thank Frederic uh, Barbaresco for his uh, invitation to come regularly to these uh, meetings. But, uh, um, and I tried to invite some people from the control community, which failed completely. Um, so I hope to push you in this sense because I think there are some techniques who could be useful to this community too. Um, so, um, and yeah, so I will also talk about structures and uh, recall uh, at the start that for thermodynamic systems there has been some sort of hesitation what could you affect as a geometric structure to these systems. So uh, you have already seen some very detailed uh, bibliographical review. Um, I call it a little bit differently, dissipative Hamilton system or double bracket systems. Um, then, and this is, so I'm gr very grateful for the talk of uh, uh, Hiroaki and Francois before because I explained to you how these very different brackets uh, can be related to um, variational formulation, so under one hat. So another way to relate all these thermodynamical systems is cons to consider some intrinsic um, structure of the state space. So these are all the um, work on contact Hamilton systems. So starting from Gibbs equation, then you say naturally that should be a contact manifold. Like for mechanical systems, you say naturally the state space displacement and momenta leads to a symplectic manifold. Um, okay, this is very nice. And a lot of work, so I'll just cite a few, few names. Uh, and, but then you can do, I will explain why, you can always say, okay, this is not satisfactory. And I will go one step further and embed everything in a symplectic structure. And then we are somehow back to mechanical system with a big difference that I would try to expose somehow. And originally I want to insist very much about uh, control. I will do that a little bit. So my contribution is uh, with RNFAS have to very little. So we take all the theories and as we are working control, we add two variables called input and output variables. Yeah, and we are done. So of course, Geometrically, you have also seen in the previous talk that you have to define some extended bundles. Yeah, but it's not really, the, okay, there are some difficulties, but we rely on previous formulations. So for dissipative system, control contact system, port dynamics system, there was some work done on this topic. And in this presentation, sorry, I would like to analyze some system theoretic properties on Four thermodynamic systems, which are a class of Hamilton system with inputs and outputs. And I will, I think, mainly insist on this definition and less on the, the nice system theoretic properties. Um, so, first, I'm also very grateful to Frederic because um, uh, we got a very nice references, a, a very nice paper of uh, Ballion and Valentin, which we would never have found or with great difficulties about homogeneous Hamilton systems on the symplectized thermodynamic phase space. And I will just recall in two slides what I understand of it and all. Yeah, so, and why are we were interested. So if you look to contact, ma contact representations, yeah, somehow you have to choose between two forms of Gibbs equation, yeah? You have to choose between what we call the energy form and the entropy form. Okay, and yeah, of course, you know that the, the transformation from the one to the other one, but somehow you would like to avoid that. So um, you can make it symmetric because you see here you have, uh, say, n extensive variables 
n plus 1 extensive variables and n intensive variables. Yeah? So somehow you can say, well, I will add an intensive variable. So I have a complete symmetry. So I change a little bit the notation. I can put these two formulas Gibbs of Gibbs equation into one single one. Yeah, and then I see that I have somehow just to take one of the variables pu or ps to zero, uh, to one, sorry, and I recover the one. Okay, you can also see in more precise ways that here you have a homogeneous expression with respect to the momenta. Yeah, and that's the basis for all this simple simplectized uh, thermodynamic phase space. Yeah. So somehow you are, you say, well, we are back to mechanics that cannot be. <laughs> and it is not true. But for the start, you consider this pairing, these pairs, and then you get a symplectic form, a Liouville form, sorry, and a symplectic two form associated with it. Yeah. Precisely, but you have invented the momentum and you have to keep into, a mi into your mind that you have some homogeneity to treat. Yeah? And to make it short, because that's the topic of this presentation, the thermodynamic phase space, so the phase space associated with Gibbs form, yeah, can be obtained by pro projectivization, projecting the cotangent bundle yeah, using homogeneity to a contact manifold with the con equipped with the contact form such that alpha is some pi, for instance P0, pu or ps, theta. And then you recover the two contact forms that you have here. Yeah, so it's an embedding view of this contact structure. Okay, so we're very enthusiastic about this idea. And just to continue, uh, Sorry, I don't see anything. <laughs> I don't know where I should look. Um, so this uh, symplectic uh, space yeah, is somehow not a state space of the system. Yeah, it's an embedding space because I want to cover these two formulations. And I want Gibbs equation to be true. So the state space is where the Gibbs equation are satisfied. And actually, it's a Lagrangian submanifold with the addition that you want it to be a homogeneous Lagrangian like manifold. Yeah. Then you can define a system, a homogeneous Hamilton system, which is a standard symplectic Hamilton system, but the Hamiltonian are homogeneous function of the momenta P, and it satisfies compatibility or invariant condition, which is it should be zero on the Lagrangian submanifold. Yeah, because the, the, the system, the differential equation, should leave invariant, of course, the properties of system. Right? You want the van der Waals gas to remain the van der Waals gas along the evolution. Yeah. Okay, so that's, I will maybe skip that. So the very nice relation, very simple relation with the uh, contact formulation, yeah, which is obtained just in projecting this symplectic formulation. Maybe I should keep, keep, skip it. Or I can come back for, for questions. Yeah, so you have then a sort of one-to-one -one relation between the symplectic, homogeneous symplectic formulation and the contact formulation. Beautiful. Okay, so we came and added a little bit to that because we are people doing control, so we have to express the control variables, for instance, the temperature or a flux and the corresponding equilibrium uh, variable, conjugate equilibrium variable. Well, then we did it precisely how it was done for mechanical systems some 25 years ago. Yeah, so uh, that was very simple. We just had to copy it. It was not uh, easy. Um, so we take this symplectic space. Recall, we are just interested in the dynamic on the, homo on the homogeneous Lagrangian sum manifold. That's the actual dynamics. So basically, we define the vector field on a very on too, mu too big space. Um, and we take the internal Hamilton system, which describes the dynamics of the, the, the uh, isolated system. And we just add HE interaction Hamiltonians. And they also should satisfy the compatibility relations that they should also the action of the environment on the system should leave invariant the property of the system. And then 
the system is given by differential equation where you recover the drift dynamics and then what we have in control to sum here the linear dependent part expressing the action of the environment of the system which are defined by Hamilton vector field with respect to homogeneous Hamilton functions and satisfying this invariance condition. Sorry. Um, okay. And again, the physical dynamics of restriction to the homogeneous manifold. So we just added this part. And we, I may show some example. Okay. Okay, no. Um, there's a second part, so we have input, sorry, we added, so external variables. So that was also the case for the talk of Hiroaki and, and Francois, uh, where we had this external fluxes coming in. So that's the same thing here. So what we add here, we add also measurements, virtual measurements, but conjugate variables. If I have, a, say, um, um, some flow coming in the system, then I also should express if the system is in, in equilibrium or not with the environment. I have a conjugate variable. I have to say something about that. Fine. And this is very simple. I just take, so now I'm coordinates because I'm going quite fast. If so if the coordinate zero correspond to the total energy of system and one to the total entropy of system, for instance, then you would take this thing. So the, the, res the partial derivative of the interaction Hamiltonian with respect to the conjugate variable P0 should be zero restricted to the Legendre. First principle, and here you express the second principle. Okay? And then you would take precisely as output so that concerns the drift dynamics. As output, you consider some similar variables, but defined with respect to the interaction Hamilton function. So that resembles also some slides we have seen before. Yeah. Okay. So how I hope I have a little time. So I take even a simpler example than Francois. <laughs> <laughs> Just a mass spring, I suppose that at, at the equilibrium with the environment, I, I, I have some temperature. I will, yeah. So this is just a, a, a mass spring system with a, with a dissipation. Yeah, very simple. And basically, I lift it to the symplectic space. Yeah, and so I have to add, of course, some internal energy to the mechanical energy. Yeah, and. And so I have the usual notation to to Gibbs equation, and I will, I will just give some equation. So that whole the symplectified or symplectized thermodynamic space is here just the eight variables corresponding to the entropy, the energy, the displacement, the momentum, and the conjugate variables. The Legendre manifold is generated by some function you see, homogeneous in P. Here is the expression of the Legendre manifold, Lagrangian manifold. When I, I pick up PS is equal to minus one, it becomes a Legendre Lag manifold, yeah, with the usual definition of all the, the forces. And here are the two contact Hamiltonians. So, so you, you see this, this one, for instance, you see clearly it resembles very much the lift of dynamical system for optimal control. Yeah. This is one possible lift. And here I have the, our contribution, <laughs> just one for the input. Yeah? So I assume there's a force pressing on the mass. Very simple. You see that uh, I have something, the conjugate variable, so P over M is the velocity. It's a conjugate variable to the force, and here's the canonical expression. Yeah. yeah. Here's the dynamics. So what do I do? Very simple. It's completely implicit. I have expressed the dynamics on all the variables, precisely what people do in chemical engineering. Every page, you have a change your variable, take the Legendre transform and some other things. So here we just take everything. And here you just write that it is a Hamilton system. Yeah. OK. OK, then I can tell a lot of things, how to interpret it. Okay, because I think I have just uh, one or five minutes or even. So just to show you, it's an implicit definition of, of 
thermodynamic system expressed on a much too big space. Yeah, and we are restricted only to the to to the some invariant manifold, which is Lagrangian manifold, with so that is very different from mechanical system homogeneity condition with respect to the momenta. Okay, but we are interested in control. What can we do with that? So we work quite a lot on it. At the moment, it's not so easy. Um, but first, what is very easy is are the passivity properties of the system, of course. Huh? You, will, you want to use energy balance and entropy balance equation, for instance. Yeah, and um, well, just it's very straightforward formulation. So if I restrict the whole dynamics to the Lagrangian sum manifold, then I recover, of course, the energy balance. Yeah, I get. Uh, sorry, there's a mistake. Huh? Here should be, a, here should be a, a inequality sign. Yeah, so I get a second principle here. I didn't express inequality. I just expressed here in, in inequality. So it's cyclopassive, what we call. And then I can even take the exergy, which is E, the energy minus T zero S. I fix some reference temperature, and I get also cyclopassivity. So here again, for some reasons, I have a inequality sign. I get some properties which are very useful for control. Yeah, that can give ri rise to control Lyapunov function and stabilization. Yeah. And that arises just from the structure. Um, of course, to make a small link, but trivial link with information theory, is that um, so in thermodynamics there's a very famous function called availability function, which for convex functions uh, just indicate local convexity. Yeah, and if you use this function here, then this is a potential which is very much used for stabilization of thermodynamic system. Yeah, again, it satisfy. So in information theory is called Breckmann divergence. Yeah, and it satisfies also a dissipation inequality. Yeah, so we then use a whole technique. So there's just a new third edition of a book I wrote with some colleagues of 729 pages <laughs> about techniques around passivity. Yeah. So for us, it's, these inequalities are very important. We can use them. So second thing we are very interested in is can we control the system? Con can we control the state of a system via the input? And which is this, we, we call it controllability. So for nonlinear system, there are several declinations, and we rather talk about accessibility. So can we control the system along a drift dynamics, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So in this, uh, so can we locally go in every direction in the state, yeah, or any direction drifted and transported by the drift vector field? So here in this, in this talk, I will just talk about accessibility. And then, so we have such a nonlinear system, linear in the control. Here you have the drift vector fields, here you have the control vector fields. Um, in words is what I said. Can I locally drive from some x at time t0 to any other x around this state? So this is uh, not true in general. So here we have some weaker thing. Can we? transport the system around the ball, around the drift vector field. Yeah? So can we compensate in all directions the drift along the, along the drift vector field? Yeah, and this is called accessibility. And then there are some algebraic and uh, uh, some algebras which are just generated by all the bracket of so that's, a, that's not nice. I should have not have written G, but some, some phi, phi k, so the brackets, uh, the Lie brackets of the vector fields, which are lie in, in F, G1, G, M. And if I take the distribution as generated by this algebra, then it should have the dynamic of the state space. Okay, but we have a much more complex system because here you see I'm, I'm on the state space. I have here an implicit system. But I mean, you have also an algebra, you have the Poisson brackets, yeah, and then you have a few things to check that rem 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 remember the Hamiltonian 
functions are homogeneous of degree one, the bracket then is homogeneous of degree one also in, in the cold, cold states. Uh, then of course we have the celebrated formula about the bracket of Hamilton vector fields. And we're very important that the bracket of two functions which satisfy the invariance condition satisfies also the invariance condition. So at the end, you can state a condition only on the Hamilton functions. Okay, I don't go to the details, but you can use the Poisson bracket of the functions restricted to the functions which satisfy the invariance condition. One minute. Okay. Then you can do something very simple, uh, similar with the uh, observability. So can I, through measurement, reconstitute the initial condition of the system in the nonlinear case? So I have also some uh, observability co-distribution. I have to check its dimension. Okay. So I will be in time. <laughs> <laughs> so what I said is we did something very simple. We used with great pleasure the work of uh, Valion and Valentin and added conjugate inputs and outputs. That allows us to, co to write balance equations for open thermodynamic systems. Then we have started with giving some properties, essential properties for, for control about passivity, accessibility, observability, completely characterized in terms of the Poisson bracket of the Hamiltonian functions. And we are already working about on structure preserving state feedback and stabilization. What we mean with that, we want to have an analog of the system closed loop. So if I, transfer, if I control a, a thermodynamic system, it remains a thermodynamic system. Yeah? So I can a little bit change the properties. Yeah? I, I want to have a design which allows me to explain in plain words or even with parameters which engineers understand what I do. Yeah, and so we have we will have two presentations at um, control conferences very soon. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.